Every time I meet a new developer, they're calling me out for my tech stack. They are saying, you should use this, 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 but then I don't. I don't change my tech stack and here is a simple reason why. If you want to make money from coding, I think you need to stick to one before you make money and then you can move to the next one. It's like playing music. If you start making electronic music and then you move too fast to, for example, classic music, it's way harder to make money of music. This was the first thing I want to say. Now let's look at my tech stack and what I'm using to build all of my projects. My tech stack start with React. Now, what is React? React is a library based on JavaScript. You can also use TypeScript for it if you want. You can build seamless frontends in just minutes. It's easy to use. I'm basically only using use state, use effect, and use context. Of course, I use other things of React too, but if you master these three concepts, you'll already be able to build beautiful things. For styling the React, I'm using Tailwind CSS. They have beautiful documentation. It's easy to use, and the inline class variable are the best way to style your app. You can make a button look red, you can put text bigger, you can do everything what you want, all with Tailwind. The best way to bundle the React and the Tailwind is by creating a Next.js project. You can use client-side rendering and server-side rendering all in once and it's easy to set up. With just a few commandos, the whole setup is done and you can start building your app. To work quick in Next.js and to not always have to recreate components such as a button, a breadcrumb, a dialog, I'm using Shetzen. Shetzen is a component framework perfectly for Next.js and they work with a kind of plug and play system. So you plug in the commando per component and then you get the component into your code base and you can use it everywhere. For icons and fonts, you can just use Google Fonts or Lucid Reacts. These are two great websites to get your fonts and your icons into your app. Now that we talked about everything in the front end, we can move on to the back end. The back end starts with choosing a language where you can write your API in. My personal preference go to C Sharp, but what is C Sharp? C Sharp is basically a newer Java, it's a newer version of Java from Microsoft and they also have very good documentation, AI is very good at it, so building an API should not be that hard. The only thing that you need to do is run the command on the screen and you can start creating your web API. For the database, I'm choosing Supabase. And why am I choosing them? It's because they have very good developer experience. They have built-in authentication. They have real-time functionality and it's self-hostable. The documentation about self-hosting Supabase is not that great, but you can find everything on GitHub issues or just somewhere on the internet. They also provide some really nice scaffolding projects such as Stripe Subscription Starter, Next.js Starter and AI Chatbot. The next thing what I'm usually do is buying a VPS. Why am I buying a VPS? Because on the VPS we will host everything that's related to our project. I buy my VPS at Hetzner because they have a good documentation and on YouTube you have full videos on how to set it up and how to use it. Once a VPS is up and running, the only thing that you need to do is install Coolify on it. This can simply be done by one command. It's just a curl command that is on the Coolify website. Coolify will be installed and then you have everything to manage your deployments. I know it can be a bit hard to set up Hetzner and Coolify and VPS, but I will leave a very good video in the description where you can find a full tutorial. Once the Coolify is all set up, we can make different environments in the dashboard. You can make a production environment, you can make a development environment, you can make a beta environment, you can make literally every environment that you can imagine for your project. And the nicest thing between those things is that you can make preview deployments between production and the development. Once a pull request is made, the build will start for the preview deployment and once it's done, you can check it out and you can check if your latest changes are ready to ship to production. This is a really nice feature that Coolify is giving us. We can make preview deployments for every environment on Coolify and it really helps you to ship good things to production. For payments, I always go for Stripe because I think they have the best developer experience and you can handle all kinds of payments with it, such as a one-time payment, a subscription-based or a credit-based system. The docs are all over the internet. I know the first time it can be a bit hard to set up, but just read the docs and you will be okay. The tool that I use to monitor the visitors on my app is plausible. They provide really good features such as top sources. You can check out where people are coming from and what are your best sources to get people on your app. Also, they provide really good documentation. It's not that hard to set up and you can fully self-host it 
on your Coolify dashboard. For mailing, I usually use Resend because they have a very good free tier. You can send out 3000 emails per month totally for free. You just have to create an API key, link your domain to it, set it up in your project and you're ready to go. I also use some other tools that I'm not going to explain fully in detail, such as Lighthouse to increase best practice, to increase SEO and to just have a regular check of your website on how it's performing. If you wanna go all in on the monitoring and tracking your visitors on your website and your project, you can also use Microsoft Clarity to get heat maps or Grafana to check the logs on every kind of way. Now that I talked about everything that I use for building my projects, you can see an overview on the screen. This is a small recap of every product that I mentioned. If you want to see a full tutorial on how to set up any of these products that you can see on the overview, please let me know which product in the comments and I will make a dedicated video about it on how to set it up and how to use it in your app. Like I said earlier, a tech stack doesn't really matter as long as you're able to build your product and ship it to production, then you're good. This was my third video on this YouTube channel. I hope you learned something if so please leave a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and leave a nice comment if you want ciao ciao